Hello, my name is John Swakano, so I'm a urologist at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Today, I'm going to discuss a case of CX bladder in a CX bladder monitor and surveillance of a patient with BCG treatment. The objectives of this uh, discussion are going to be to review different clinical scenarios where CX bladder is appropriate, to understand clinical need for ordering CX bladder, to discuss how CX bladder test results impacted a patient outcome, and to gain insight into the healthcare providers' perspectives on clinical utility of CX bladder. To start, we can uh, discuss a, a patient, a specific patient of mine, and this is an 83-year-old male who initially presented to my clinic with gross hematuria in 2017. At that point, he was taken to the operating room and identified to have carcinoma in situ of the bladder, and he was initially treated with BCG induction, so once a week for six weeks, followed by maintenance for a, a completed, which completed a year in 2019. After that, the patient was followed uh, by routine cystoscopy, urine cytologies, um, and occasional periodic upper tract imaging. The current status of the patient is that he is NED, um, but in this scenario, there is specific use for CX uh, bladder monitoring that I, I will uh, discuss in a second. The clinical challenge was that the patient was doing well on surveillance until uh, February of 2020. At that point, he came in for his routine uh, cystoscopy, which on visualization was found to be negative, uh, but his urine cytology actually showed malignant cells. So at this point, um, we did order a CX bladder test, and it's specifically a C CX monitor. And as you can see here, the results on the, on the screen, uh, the patient actually came under the threshold, so he had a low probability of having a recurrent urothelial carcinoma. But uh, following sort of traditional guidelines, uh, the patient did go forward um, and, and was taken to the operating room in which he had a, a negative random biopsies of the bladder and the prostatic urethra, and then selective cytologies from the upper tract were negative. He subsequently has had malignant cytologies, uh, negative cystoscopies, and negative CX bladder monitoring during his surveillance. His last evaluation was just recently, November of 2021, where he's still on ED. At this point, his uh, actually of interest, his, his cytology was actually found to be atypical, um, and his cytology was still negative. And so um, the uh, other outcomes of the patient were that he did have upper tract imaging when his cytology converted to positive, which was negative. His other uh, tests, like we, uh, we just discussed, his random biopsies and prostatic biopsies were all negative, and his selective cytologies in the upper tract were all negative. This subsequently um, it still holds true that his cystoscopies have been all uh, negative, and his imaging, he did have one uh, repeat CT scan, which was negative. So the interesting part of all this, that if we were to follow the CX bladder uh, monitor test, we would have not actually taken uh, the patient to do any of these uh, other extra um, tests. And so it's very important to have the ability to have a test with high sensitivity and negative predictive value. Uh, this will allow us for less invasive procedures for patients undergoing surveillance. And I think that this is a real critical key uh, point that we need to understand and really uh, very important for our patients uh, for the future. 